the center approved this project in October 2009 and farmers, activists and citizens have been protesting since August 2010. It's 2013 now. At what stage of construction is the plant now and how fruitful have these protests been? Well, as far as construction is concerned, nothing has started so far. But uh, all clearances seem to have been done uh, and the government is ready to start construction but they are waiting for things to settle down uh, in some sense. What has happened, however, is that post Fukushima, the tempo of the protests have sharply increased. Basically because till Fukushima, I think the protest in among the villagers in the area was largely confined to those villages where uh, complete removal of civilian population had been ordered and where displacement was the major issue. But villagers in surrounding areas and in surrounding villages have become ext extremely concerned since Fukushima because they have seen that the impact of a disaster is not confined only to a few kilometers around the plant but can spread much farther uh, down. So that's where things stand uh, at the moment and I think the government is waiting A on investment, B on the protests to die down uh, to a physically start uh, major construction. This pressurized heavy water reactor, once built, will need huge quantities of water for steam generation and cooling purposes. The government of Haryana for this has assured about 320 cusics of water supply from the Bhakra Canal. How will this in turn affect the irrigation and the agricultural output of the area? To me, this is one of the biggest concerns about the Gorakhpur plant and why even today I am surprised that a comprehensive environment impact assessment uh, has not uh, thrown up red flags in this uh, regard because as you said there is a huge amount of water requirement and the entire water requirement for this project is to come from this one irrigation uh, canal. Now as we know an irrigation canal does not carry huge quantities of uh, water and if you take away a regular supply of 320 cusics from the irrigation canal, it is clearly going to deprive the local agricultural community of that amount of water which they would otherwise use for uh, irrigation. And if you put that water back, it will be going in at much higher temperatures with volumes of water in the irrigation canal not being such that they will dilute this increase of temperature very quickly as would happen in offshore installations where you discharge uh, water warm sea. water into the sea. So it will have an impact on irrigation particularly during lean season when water flows in the irrigation canal will come down but you will still require a regular offtake of the same quantity of water for running the plant. So I am sure it is going to have an impact on uh, farming in the area. If there is a runaway uh, reaction uh, as happened in uh, Fukushima then what we saw in Fukushima is that you will have to draw on the seawater to uh, cool the system uh, down. Here you have no reservoir of water except the canal itself and if you have emptied out the waters in the canal, that is it. There is nothing further that you can do with regard to cooling of water. There is no alternative source. Earlier, the Ministry of Environment and Forests has given this project a green signal. There are other concerns regarding violating the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board's regulation in terms of siting, population density and sterile zone. How important are these concerns? See, I think these concerns are extremely important and unfortunately uh, there is the usual uh, shroud of secrecy around anything nuclear due to which we don't know, even know what kind of answers the authorities have uh, come to. The environmental impact assessment to the best of my knowledge has not been 100% completed by an independent agency as is required and in any case 
it is not in the public domain. So, we have no idea what factors have been taken into consideration, what has been considered as favorable, not favorable, etc. In terms of citing, I would think even by the AERB's own criteria, there are many factors which would uh, go against the siting of this plant in this area. You are extremely, the plant is located extremely close to high density population uh, areas. There is Hisar itself, which is a very large uh, town. There is Gorakhpur, which is also not small, with populations of over 30,000 uh, in the immediate vicinity and its uh, environs. Very narrowly, if you look at it, within a 1.5 kilometer exclusion zone, you can extern the population and put them outside. But in the next zone, up to about 5 odd kilometers, the density of population is still quite heavy. And if I were to have chosen a siting uh, criteria, I would have first said, look for alternative sites there would be better sites with less population density in the area to look for given the adverse situation with regard to water, given the high population density of the area, I would have thought that there would be better sites available than this one or no. On a more broader note, given the large costs involved in setting up a nuclear plant and the environmental issues that are being raised, is this risk worth taking? See, that's the million dollar question uh, today. Nuclear energy is one technology where the more we learn, the more time advances, the more familiar we get with the technology, the more we appreciate the risks involved and therefore, in order to counter those risks, the more costs are incurred. This is one of the few technologies which have got more expensive as time has progressed rather than less expensive. And today, after Fukushima, the concept of taking care of accidents beyond design uh, considerations. That is, accidents which are not envisaged at the time of designing uh, the plant. Today, in internationally, regulatory agencies want that precautions should be built in to take care of accidents which are unasked is, uh, is it worth spending so much money at such high risk on a source of energy which has these problems when if you wanted to spend that much money you could invest fairly high amounts of money in solar energy or in wind power and also generate uh, electricity without these risks. Exactly. So that is really the question to be asked on the other way. What is it so great about nuclear energy as to demand such high investment and such high risks? My answer, therefore, to that would be until we understand the risks better, until costs come down, and that is not going to happen unless there are far more transparent, open, honest, scientific evaluations and taking the public into confidence about nuclear energy. I don't think it is wise to spend a lot of money where there are so many unknowns involved when if if you are actually prepared to spend more money there are other alternatives available